All right, guys. Now, welcome to the Northern Territory. For the next uh, half an hour or so, I'm going to take you around and, and show you quite a quite a few things up here in the Northern Territory, up in the top end. But first, let's start off here with tripod. Biggest warning sign, caution, crocodiles. There are crocodiles in waterways up here, so do be careful when you're up and about and swimming. So come in here and let's have a look at tripod. Tripod was a, uh, a crop that was uh, caught back in the 80, 86, 84, somewhere around there where he was at a community threatening all the people around that, that area. So they caught him and they moved him out and he's classed as a problem animal. But during his time in the wild, he's lost one of his legs. I'll try and get him up here a little bit. Come on, big fella. Come on. Come on. Come on. Up he come. So we'll try and get him up and show you. Come on, up he come. Show you his leg. Come on, mate. Up he come. Up he come. Come on. Come on, up he come. So he's, <clears throat> it's time of the, this time of the year too is starting to cool down. So the crocodiles are getting quite lethargic and they do slow right down due to the weather. I'll give him this little piece there to eat. He's come right in, you can have a look. So give you a good look at tripod here as he just swallows that bit of pork pretty quick. There's a lot of feral pigs up here. So um, that's what we use to um, feed these massive animals. Such a remarkable, remarkable animal, these crocodiles, you know, they've survived for, what, 250 million years. Um, and they're one of the oldest living dinosaurs that we have. We'll give him this other bit of pig leg. Come on, come on. There we go. They will just devour that down. He's about 17 foot and he weighs in close to a ton. Come right in here, it's a real good close. Side view there. This is the dry season. We've had to do a bit of burn off here, including tripod's pen. You can just see the sheer size of this croc. 17 foot, weighing close to a ton. He's massive. And what I was talking about there before, on his left foot, sorry, right, right foot there, right, right front, he's lost it. That was due to another crocodile <clears throat> grabbing him in the wild and tearing his, tearing his whole arm off. Well, let's move over here next door and we'll see if we can get this other crocodile out. His name's Bullo, and um, he actually was caught on a cattle station where he uh, jumped into someone's boat and sunk their boat. So they didn't really want him around, so I ended up with him as well. But we'll just lock this guy up. All right, let's go into this next one over here. So up here, this where we are right now is at one of our um, camps, Top End Safari Camp. And um, we've got a few rescue crops here. We've got two up the top, a uh, tripod that you just met, and this other one called Bullo. As we're coming into the dry season, um, these water levels start dropping a lot. So we try and um, keep the water levels right up to them through the dry. Come into this one. Now we'll see if Bullo will come up. He's not always very cooperative. We use a stick this time because he's a little bit faster. And um, a bit more uh, angry than what tripod is. Anyway, let's see if we can get him up. Come on, big fella. So you can see what we're doing here is just mimicking something on the water's edge, an animal or something. Just come around that side a little bit. Um, and we're just mimicking that sort of, like a pig or wallaby or even cows or horses, just having a drink on the edge of the water. And that little bit of splashing in the underwater, he's just slowly moving closer and closer and closer. And then at one point, he's, he'll launch out. Just depends on how cold he is and how quickly he wants to move today, if at all. So, he's not coming up with that. Sometimes, I'll just throw a little rock in, just to where I think he might be laying. No, he's not coming up for that. Come on, big fella. Let's see. 
when working with crocs you've got to be so patient they are they're a very slow animal when they're moving about and they're stalking their prey even just lazing about the place they don't like to burn up too much energy and even now i'm making this noise he doesn't really probably want to come out but we'll just see how we go come on big fella really pretty crocodile this one he's got a big white head on him anyway let's see if we'll get him out come on no, he's not wanting to come out let's try this leg come on big fella there you go there he is he's grabbed that he's grabbed off the bottom we'll leave him he's not going to come out now you can just see him there he's got a pig leg in his in his mouth but he's going to go back under with that that's right he's got that he'll eat that all right so what we're going to do we'll drive down to this camp that we've got just down uh, down the track here a bit going to have a look at a look at a couple of things along the way i'll leave that there for afternoon's dinner and then we'll jump in the chopper um these crocs i'll feed about once a week especially this time of the year the padlock there um oh is it yeah so these crocs they'll eat about once a week uh during the dry season then if it gets too cold they won't eat at all so we um we just monitor how much we feed them especially being in captivity here they won't um they won't be moving around as much either when it's um the wet season is a lot hotter just watch your finger there boo yeah when it's the wet season it's a lot hotter these crocodiles will be eating nearly every day eating a pig leg once a day uh, and that you, you you got to have a good supply of feral pigs which there's a lot of them up here but you know the best part of the territory at the moment is that the dry season's moved on in the days are magic i think it's about a 24 degree day 25 degrees nice uh easily wind blowing it's uh magic magic time to be up here all right jump in and we'll uh we'll head down to the camp Here we go. Okay, we've got, we've got my wife Kai behind the camera. We've got Banjo riding shotgun there behind us. And uh, Timmy, my ops manager, that runs the uh, tour operations that we have up here in the Territory. He's uh, he's hanging in there as well. Uh, this is our little, little area where our staff stay sometimes. So what we're doing, we're just driving down to the camp. It's what we call the top end safari camp. I haven't got the tent set up yet, obviously, because all this COVID stuff that went on and now doors are opening. We're, uh, we're about to put all the tents up and we're starting to get a lot of people come out. But have a look at these termite mounds as we drive down. Magic. I'll get, it, get you up nice and close to this one as we come past. Yeah, uh, these very um african landscapish i guess you could say if you if that's even a word with these massive cathedral termite mounds and this is the reason why i built this camp here is you know there's, there's these huge amazing um, mounds built by these little termites it's all built by termites and the queen inside them will um live between 50 to 100 years old just continually producing offspring and they're continually building their their little empire of of uh mud mortar and sticks i guess so let's um i'll take you up to this one here i'll jump out and have a look at it it's quite large let's have a look here uh, actually no we'll go this next one here we'll go this next one because there's a tent down here just put the seat belt back on All right. Here we go. Oh. Okay, so let's have a look here. This is one of the big termite mounds and this is the reason why I built the um built the camp. 
was because of these big guys. Magic. So have a look at the size of that guy. Huge. So you can just see these are so tough, like that's solid. The old bushies, when they're building cattle yards, or rails, fence posts, they'll get these, crush them all up and stick them and pack their poles into the dirt and, and it sets like concrete. It's just so tough. And that's, if that gets broken off a little bit, you've got uh, little ones, they'll, they'll just continue rebuilding and uh, fixing anything that happens. So uh, during the wet season, these guys get pretty smashed with the big rains that come in. Anyway, keep coming. Let's get up here on the deck. I'll give you a little introduction around the deck. We've got, um, this is our first weekend. We've, we've been able to kick off uh, a few tours. So we've made it pretty family friendly where um, guests can self drive out to this place now and um, just enjoy what we have here and hop in the airboat with one of our airboat drivers, jump in the chopper, go for a fly around. Really, really nice spot just to come down, chill out and relax. A little swimming pool there if you get too hot. So, anyway, keep coming. We're going to jump in this helicopter. So this is where our tents get set up. This is our lawn here. And our tents, they're called Lotus Bell Tents. And they come up like a little lotus bell. If you get on the website, you'll be able to see that. Top End Safari Camp website, you'll see how they get set up. Nice little spot to chill out for the evening. All right, here's the chopper. Crank it up. I'll just run ahead, I'll get it started. Stay there. All right, hopefully you guys can hear me when, when um, we start this helicopter and we start flying. <sighs> Give me a minute. All right. So when we get up in the air here, we'll, I have to be wearing these headsets, otherwise these earpods are obviously going to fall out. I'll give it a couple of minutes here. I just hold that while you get your seatbelt on. My wife, Kai, gang. Hey. Hey, right hand camera woman. Okay. So we're situated, this whole area is situated around the Finnis River. Um, Dundee area, if you know anything of the territory. We've got Dundee just out to the west of us. Darwin's out to the north. Um, it's about an hour, hour and a half drive from Darwin to get out here. But um, it's well worth the drive and well worth the look. All right. It's secure. Beautiful. Headset. Another headset there. Alright. There you go. Oh. There you go. Alright, we should be uh, I don't know if you can hear me. I'll talk. Hopefully you can hear. I'll yell. Um flash lights off all good. Good to go. Mag check. Okay, Kevin is good, 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 doing good. All right, here we go. This is the fun part. So, that big safari camp is just here if you have a look out there. This is a big map of Australia I built a dozen a while ago. The Virgin pilots used to come in on how they could see that when they're flying to Darwin to Perth. I don't know if you can see that. Big map of Australia. Alright, let's head down. So we're going to head down to these wetlands now. So finish with the station and the cattle just over the other side here. The post 
The fight just out there, but just out there, like about 20 miles. Really good fishing this time of year, just at the, uh, at the end of the wet season. It's, uh, we get this thing called the runoff up here, where all the fresh water is running out into the ocean, and the big farm under, we're sitting up in little creeks and streams where, uh, you can get in with a boat and you get a good chance of catching some pretty nice farm under. Here we are, we're coming down. Really pretty little area here. So this, this is the rest of our, our other rescue fox here. If you can see them, will come down. Okay. So that's all the rescue fox in there. You got underbite, Tarzan. There he is in there. Pretty little area here. Sweet lagoon. There's a lot of crocodiles in here. I think we went out one night, we did a count, there's about a hundred odd crocodiles that we saw at night time. Well, our airboat operating here as well, so we'll just show you that. We come down here. Okay, so this is you jump in the airboat. Pretty noisy. This time of year, it's just magnificent. I love it, love it up here. Love the wet season, love the dry season. So we're coming up to these, these termite mounds here. Taking another little spot. How are we going for service? Are we doing good? Any questions? Hey? Can we do another crocodile? Oh, we want to do another croc? Yeah. Uh, we can't do another croc, no, because we'll run out of service down there. We can't we can't get down there. Um, we could run. 
Thanks, Lionel. Oh, the white line's here. Oh, you know. Yeah. <laughs> 
is the same way as all the water runs down into the flood plain. This is where the ferns will come. All these ferns come down here to catch all the little, little fish, little bugs. So many little <coughs> waterborne crustaceans and um, larvae that come down through here. Look how pretty this is, okay? Many different bits of work. Coming up here in front of us are whistling ducks. There's thousands and thousands of these whistling ducks. Oh. Here's a pig. Here's a big feral pig. That's what I'm saying, the crocodiles. What they do up here, I can't land and I can't show you, but they really destroy the landscape up here. <coughs> Sorry. They really destroy the uh, land up here by digging up the ground and, and moving the ground up and uh, causing a lot of problems. So um, the class is a, a, a very big problem up here in the Northern Territory. So the more I can feed to the crocodiles, the better. Look at this. You can see these tracks, if you can see these tracks in that grass there, that's crocodiles. Crocodiles are always moving around in the grass. So they're always up here hunting, looking for ducks, <coughs> pigs, wallabies, cattle. Why don't you tell people about the beautiful waterfalls we have to swim in, but then, you know, these sorts of areas have crocodiles and salt water and freshwater crocodiles, what they mean. So we've got, there's um, all these floodplains and that is great for uh, scenery and bird life and, and fishing, but just not far from here, up in this high ground, up in that excitement country, is Lipswood National Park. And such a beautiful excitement area, that's where all the water comes from. It comes off the excitement and comes down and opens up into our floodplains. And up in there, there's, there's roads and the national parks where you can swim, Beautiful, beautiful waterfall. Um, and those places are very safe to swim. Pastor Wildlife go in there, they clear it out, they make sure they monitor it on a weekly daily basis, so you can always, um, always safely swim. And when you're up here in the Northern Territory, up in the north part of Australia, you do want to swim. It does get warm and you want to take a trip. You just got to make sure that you do go swimming that it is a designated swimming place that is clear from crocodiles. Salt water crocodiles. Now, a lot of people get mixed up with the salt water crocodile thinking that the salt water crocodile only lives in salt water. That's not true. Some of the biggest crocs I've ever caught that a salt water crocs I've caught in some, like, I've caught them about 200 miles from the ocean. So, some of the crocodiles need fresh water to survive. And they do move and they do inhabit all of our waterways up here, billabongs and that. So, it's, it's great to go out and see them and, and uh, interact on, on pools with the crocodiles. But if you want to go swimming, you've got to go to designated swimming areas where it's been cleared out by the phony. So, we're making our way back in now, <clears throat> back towards the camp. We just we've hit a bit of a headwind. So, that was up there. <clears throat> we'll take another flight up the lagoon on the way. <clears throat> There's so much up here in the Northern Territory. <clears throat> In around Darwin, Tingle Island, you know, we've got Antioch, the Earl of Alice Springs, the desert country. It's just the landscape changes so, uh, so dramatically from a desert to a lush wetland, to raging waterfalls, and then you go into Arnhem Land where there's so much Aboriginal culture and, um, <coughs> and some great characters. So, it is definitely uh, a place you want to visit. You want to put it on your bucket list. There's some great, uh, great operators up here. 
Hold on. 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 We're going to land the top up here with tripod and uh, finish up there. tripod given to me um, by one of the parks. A lot of these <clears throat> big crocs they had uh, on display either in their park or they uh, had them for breeding and tripod was never good and they had to get rid of him and uh, like an old bull really if he's no good for breeding they'll, they'll get rid of him and uh, <clears throat> I said I'd take him, so he's one of the first big crocs that I, I've got here. And um, I know the bloke that caught him many years ago, back in 84, 86, somewhere there. Um, I worked with him when I was a young fella catching crocodiles as well. And he uh, he caught tripod down on uh, at Daly River Mission because I worried that uh, he was going to eat someone. And I'd come over here while I was going to finish off the tripod. But I've, I've had him here for about uh, six, seven years now. He's um, He's been a great little asset for us and he's got his uh, nice little pen here, little waterway. Comes up and sunbakes and gets it. Definitely. This is, a, this, is what, this is what you come to the Northern Territory for, is to, for these experiences. So if you get up here, there's... Um, a lot of lot to see, a lot of places to go, and yes, you can come and experience big old tripod. Let me get a stick this time, gang. Oh, I don't know. I want to keep my hands. Hey, big fella. <clears throat> hey, what are you doing? Come on, come on. He's quite a large, large animal. Remember guys, remember guys, I've been working with crocs my whole life and reptiles my whole life. I've caught many, many crocs and worked with some of the best crocodile catchers in Australia. Um, so do not try and interact with crocs in this sort of way. I've been I'm well experienced and I've done a lot of it from Ever since I was a kid, catching brown snakes, now a um, bit older, catching these big old monster crocs. So do not try and interact with saltwater crocodiles, any crocodiles in any sort of way form. They will, um, if they do grab you, something like this, it will kill you. 
So stay well away. If you do see the crocs, leave them alone, take a photo, and be on your way. But, um, anyway, all right, I hope everyone's enjoyed a little tour around the top end. Um, I hope to see you up here soon. All right, guys, enjoy your day. Nice Sunday.